Uh, welcome, and for those of you who I don't know or don't know me, my name is David Rin. I'm the Director of Organizational Growth for ZVC. This is Networking for Success, Networking for Recruitment Success. What we're going to be focusing on today is not just how to be successful in recruitment, but how to successfully network. As the title says, our goal is to make sure that we've developed the, the best and most fruitful connections possible with people that we want to join our fraternity. But what we also want to do is make sure that you all feel comfortable and feel successful when it comes to networking for your personal lives or professional lives in general. So our learning outcomes for today are understanding what goes into recruitment. People will be able, will be able to understand how to use networking successfully. They'll be able to understand how to translate networking into recruitment. And then they'll be able to understand how to use the three steps of sales to successfully recruit. So I wanted to start out with, with the definition of networking. So as Miriam Webster Dictionary has defined, networking is defined as the exchange of information or services among individuals, groups, or institutions. They also define it as the cultivation of product, productive relationships for employment or businesses. However, I like to put it as networking is the process of developing new relationships in hopes of receiving a beneficial end result. When I think of networking, I think of, I'm here to connect with somebody, to connect with multiple people, because I have an urge to meet new people and uh, establish connections with those who can help me be more successful in the future. Whether I'm looking for a job, looking for a, a new circle of people to connect with in my new home, in my new city or town, or connecting with a virtual group of people in COVID-19 era, so I can make sure that I'm just as successful virtually as I am in person. Um, many of the topics and points that we talk about should be applicable to all the above. So what do you, what do you need to do to be successful and, and to successfully network? We'll go through 11 different topics or areas that, we, that I believe, based off my research, you need to be successful. The first thing is you need to meet people through other people. You need to meet people through other people. In most cases, I would imagine most of your relationships have been developed through people you've met through other people. I know when I think of um, my, my closest relationships, I've met most of my best friends through other people that I was friendly with. When I think about fraternity, for example, most of the people we recruit may become good friends of ours. The people that we recruit are people that were friends of brothers or, or members of our organization. So when we think about recruiting or meeting people through other people, let's ask, pe let's ask the people in our organization, our friends, our family, who do you know that's going to our, our university next year? How can we connect with them? The second point is leverage social media. Right now, we'll talk about social media again later on, but right now we're talking about how can we connect with somebody through social media? I'm not necessarily saying slide into the DMs and connect with them through that. While that is a viable option, we want to use social media to get to know somebody. Who is the person that we're looking to get to know? What do they post about? Um, do they post a lot about their family? Do they post a lot about sports? Do they post um, appropriate information? Or do they post a lot? Do they post a little? Who are they in terms of social media? Also consider who they follow, who they're friends with, who they, they, they comment, who, who's, whose posts they comment on. Don't ask for something right away. When we, con when we connect with someone for the first time, we're not saying, hey, join my organization. Or we're also not saying in the, in the opposite, um, will you give me a job? Or please give me a job. We want to use our first opportunity to connect to somebody to get to know them, to connect to them on a personal level. We want to be friends with the, with the person before we ask them for anything, before we even 
invite them to join us in a meeting. Use a common interest or co our contact as a conversation starter. Uh, we'll go over a, an example briefly in, in a moment, but what I would say here is the best way to have a great conversation or start a great conversation is uh, to start talking about something familiar, something that both of you feel comfortable talking about. Be conscious of time. I'm going to be very conscious of your time right now. I'm hoping to stick to about 35 minutes, but I want you to know that um, I'm paying attention to the clock, that I want to have a conversation with you, a short conversation, and I want to give you enough information in this period of time that will allow you to feel comfortable having a follow-up conversa conversation with me later on. Use the 1585 rule, or as it says here, 8515 rule. Let the person speak. We want to ask questions 15% of the time or talk 15% of the time. Let the other person talk 85% of the time. If they ask a question, give them a good answer. Otherwise, ask a good question and expect a good answer in return. Talk about your experience. We're not necessarily talking about talk about your fraternity experience, but talk about how your fraternity has helped you. Talk about how being in a fraternity has impacted your college experience. What has your college experience been like since you joined your organization? Ask about their network. Who do you know that's going to be going to your university or your college next year? How, did you, how do you know these people? How, how are you continuing to talk to these people and communicate with these people as school um, starts to approach? Always be prepared with a reason to follow up. Always have something written in the conversation where you're able to say, oh, we had a great conversation about the New York Yankees. I'm going to follow up with him about uh, what's going to be happening with the Major League Baseball in the next couple weeks. Or go as far as we just talked about their network, follow up with them and say, hey, I, I heard you mentioned that you're, a bunch of your friends are going to go into our school next year. Um, what, is, what are they up to? What do, you got, what do you guys do to, uh, to constantly stay in touch? I'd love to connect with, with you guys and introduce you to some more friends that I have, some more freshmen that are gonna be coming to our school next year so you have that much bigger of a network. Be kind and caring. We wanna make sure that whoever it is we're talking to believes that we're not just people looking for something in return of, of nothing that they're giving us or that we're giving them, but that we truly care about the conversation we're having. We want to focus on them uh, being, understanding that we want to be their support system, their friends, part of their circle. Then have an online presence. Uh, this, this, this is a few, we can talk about this in a few different ways, but uh, what, what the one thing that it does focus on is having an appropriate social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whether it's a, a website, uh, LinkedIn, any of the above, your social media should be appropriate. Then also making sure that you follow that person once you get off, the, get off the phone with them. Make sure that you show that our one conversation right now didn't go to waste. I wanna to continue to keep in touch with these on the road. So let's use an example. Alan and Jonathan are fraternity brothers. Or they're friends, they're part of the same organization, whatever we wanna use. Alan wants to introduce Jonathan to Alan's, Alan's friend, Sam. So Jonathan looks, at, looks into Sam on social media to get to know who Sam is and what Sam's interested in. Jonathan reaches out to Sam with the goal of getting to know him through what he's learned about Alan and through Sam's social media. He asks him what he's excited about when, when starting college. He also asks him a variety of other questions. Why, why did you decide to attend our university? Um, who do you know that's going to be going to our school? What were you involved in, in high school? A variety of things that, that we've learned through the social media through, through Alan that um, we can follow up with, with Sam on. Jonathan then brings, brings up Alan. So how do you know Alan? I, heard, I know Alan played basketball in high school. Did you play basketball with him in high school as well? Let Alan or let Sam um, answer that question and learn a little bit more about what, what Sam's got going on. Maybe Sam knows Alan from a youth group. Maybe he knows him from camp. Maybe they're next door neighbors. We don't know until we truly ask. So once we learn that information, we, we kind of tuck that information away 
and we save it for a little, for a little bit later. Keep, keep an eye on the time. If you're using video chat, try to keep calls to about 30 minutes unless the, the person indicates that he can speak longer. When using video chat, which is, by the way, this is a very common thing to use over, over the summer and really during COVID times, we wanna make sure that we look presentable. Wear a polo. Uh, make sure that there's nothing behind you that's inappropriate. You shouldn't have anything that's inappropriate in your room, but make sure if you're in your bedroom that you made your bed. Make sure your dog's not barking. Make sure your cat's not jumping all over you. Unless the person really likes, really likes cats, then introduce your cat. Johnson should remember to ask open-ended questions like, what made you decide to come to our school? What are you interested in? What are you excited about when it comes to going to, let's call it City College of New York? What are you looking to study? Why are you interested in, in that topic? Ask open-ended questions so we can allow him to, to one, and give us good answers, but two, show, show us how interested he is in the conversation. Talk about the fraternity experience. Jonathan had no intention of joining a fraternity because of whatever reason that might have been, whether it was finances, stereotypes, so on and so forth. But he decided to join ZBT because he wasn't because ZBT wasn't what he thought it would be. He expected it to be what he saw in Animal House, but he saw it as something totally different. How did ZBT or fraternity impact Jonathan's life? Let's talk a little bit about that as Sam is now just going to college, doesn't know a lot about what he's, what he's gonna be uh, getting himself into. John, Jonathan could then ask, so how many people do you know that are going to City College in New York next year? Let's get to know Sam a little bit and understand and, uh, where he's from. If you know so many people, how does he know so many people that are going to our school next year? And then we also wanna follow up with him and say, oh, so you, you guys are, are all such good friends. Are you all gonna be living in the same residence hall? Uh, what, how, how often do you guys talk right now? Do you guys have a plan to, to join an organization together? So then Jonathan might say, next Monday, I'm actually getting together with some friends of mine that are going to be freshmen this fall as well. Are you free at XYZ time on, on a day? I'd love to introduce you to a few more people who are going to our school. You might actually know some of them too. Throughout the conversation, make sure you, you show you're excited in the conversation. Maintain eye contact if on, if on video chat and be timely with your responses. If you're texting back and forth in this conversation, make sure you don't leave 30, to 30 minutes to an hour in between, in between messages, but make sure that you're responding within a few minutes. The reason why he's talking to you is because you want to talk to him. Help him understand that you are interested in this conversation, even though you're not physically in front of him. So Jonathan might say, there are some pretty cool campus Instagram pages that were really helpful for me when I started school. What's your Instagram handle so I can share, share a few of them with you? If you don't already know his Instagram, that's a great way to get, to get it. Uh, a lot of you guys on the call or on, on the video chat do understand how to get on Instagram, but Instagram is a really great way to maintain uh, engagement with potential, potential new brothers or potential recruits. Being able to like their things, just sit, or even simply post on, your, post on your, own, your own Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, whatever it might be. But as they see what you're posting, they start to gain a little bit more interest potentially in what you've got going on, and they might start liking your stuff. As they start liking your things, comment back, like back, make sure that they see that there's a mutual engagement. So questions people ask about network, networking during COVID. These are just some common questions. How can I network if I can't meet someone in person? It's a really great question. So one thing that I've noticed is that, yes, we can't meet in person. Yes, it's a struggle to not be able to leave your house, but the thing that people forget often is we're all in this together. As High School Musical, I believe once said, we are all in this together. So what we want to focus on is the fact that, yes, we're all stuck at home. Yes, we all wish we could be in person, but we're all willing to, do, to use or do whatever it takes to be able to have that, per, that, that human contact. So a lot of people use Zoom. A lot of people use uh, Facebook. They'll use Instagram. They'll use uh, their iPhone, whether it's FaceTime or 
um, house party, a variety of different apps that allow people to connect. These are all acceptable ways of connecting because this is what people have to do in order to maintain some sort of contact. Does, doesn't networking through text, email, phone, social media, or Zoom seem rather less personal? I would agree. But when compared to what the alternative is, which is not talking or networking at all, it seems like a great option. We'll talk about, a variety, we'll talk about what, what benefits there are of each of these a little bit later. But keep in mind, these are all really great options when it comes to, to connecting with people. Why would someone want to talk to me if they don't know me? Also a really great question. David, you've done a great job in asking questions. The reason why people would want to, would want to talk to you is because of someone you know or, some, or something you have to offer. Keep in mind that a relationship is nothing more than an exchange of, re, of, of benefits. I have something to offer you because, and you have something to offer me. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that when we're, when we decide we want to network with somebody that what I'm offering you is just as what you're offering me is just as beneficial as what I want to offer you. So let's, let's look at an example. We're talking to someone who's going to, going to be going to our university next year and um, you've never met them before in your life. Someone in your chapter, someone in your fraternity, someone who um, recommended this person, a family, family member or, or alumnus, reaches out and says, hey, I know this person is going to be, he'll be a great member of our organization. Can you reach out to him? Sure. So typically when you reach out to a person, you're not going to say, hey, John, my name is David. I'm brother of ZBT. Uh, I'd love to recruit you. He might say, no, thank you. If you change that, the, that, that introduction to, hey, my name is David. I got your number from a friend of mine, Sam. Uh, Sam said that you're going to be going to my school next year and that you, you're actually going from out of state and that you're, you might be interested in learning a little bit more about uh, what I've got going on on campus. Talk about what you've got going on before you talk about your organization. Our goal is to sell, sell people on who we are before we sell them on our organization. They wanna know that they can trust you before they can trust a whole, a whole group of other people. Typically people like to say, or at least I like to say, people join people who are like them. So if I'm a person that likes sports, the chances are that the people I hang out with also like sports. If I'm a good person that likes to do good deeds and likes to, uh, do service and raise money for, for those that need it, likely I will also hang out with people who do something similar. And so that's why people would want to, to talk to you because you provide them with something beneficial. How would I know if someone is interested in what I have to say or what I have to offer? It's also a good question. It's really hard to determine uh, whether someone's interested or not until you get you start that conversation. Talk to them about who they are. Ask them personal questions. Where are you from? Uh, why did you decide to come to, to the school? What are you looking to study? How do you know this person? Have these, these, these brief conversations so you can start to get, get them feeling a little bit more comfortable about, about having being part of this conversation. So networking is an opportunity to recruit people into your circle. So when talking about networking, networking is an opportunity to recruit people into your circle, your close circle of whether friends, family, or even um, a professional setting. So when we, when we network, we want to provide people the opportunity to get to know us and what our circle is like. But a lot of times when it comes to networking, you oftentimes are looking for something from someone else. I read an article the other day that said that networking is uncomfortable because people feel it's self-serving. That you're going out looking to get information from somebody and in return, they get nothing back. What we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we're providing an opportunity for you to get something, but for the person that, that you're networking with to get something back. Let's use an example, let's use a professional example. 
you're networking with someone who could potentially get you a job in the future. You want to get a job at Amazon one day. Someone comes to your campus and they, uh, they're interviewing students for jobs, but you're not quite at that place yet where you're able to get a job, maybe an internship. You walk up to that person and you say, hey, my name is David. Um, I'm not quite ready for a job yet, but I'd really love to talk to you about what, what you all have going on when it comes to internships. I'm curious about internships because I'm not quite ready for an internship either, but I'm hoping that in the future, I'd be able to, to apply for one. So they get to share a little bit about their organization. They get to share a little more about, about Amazon. You get to learn a little more about what they've got going on. But what you overall want to do is you want to be able to say, I'd like to follow up with you. I have some friends that are actually looking for internships or jobs this year. And I think they would be really interested in talking to you after hearing what you have to offer. So being able to provide them with some, some contacts, some people that would be able to also join in um, and help that person to, to fulfill the, the positions that they're, looking, that they're looking to fill. Recruitment is also an opportunity to grow your personal and professional network. A lot of times people look at recruitment as just an opportunity to grow our organization. In reality, recruitment is an opportunity to grow your personal and professional network. I was talking to a brother at the University of Texas a couple months ago, and he, he told me this, um, and he gave me permission to use it. And I said, so what does that mean? And he said, every person that we recruit could be a future brother-in-law, could be a future business partner. He could deliver my, my future child. He could be my, my, my future child teacher. Um, he could build my house one day. He could be my mortgage broker. He could be any of the above. Typically, as someone who just bought a house, it took a long time for me to find a mortgage broker because I needed to find somebody that I could trust. And when it comes to fraternity, when we think about uh, our own personal professional goals, we think about our fraternity. Who can we connect with that can help us to be more successful? So when it comes to recruitment, let's recruit the people that can help us to be successful in the future. Who are the people that can challenge us now and can challenge us in the future so that we can be more successful within our organization and afterwards, after we've graduated. So what I wanna go over now are the three steps of success. This is a commonly known um, process but something I wanted to discuss with you guys. The first is list, then contact, and close. So we'll go one by one and talk about each one. So list the people you have, you have networked with, the people that you have networked with. List the people uh, your close circle has in their circle. Who are the people that your friends know that you don't know? And then list the people that you want to network with. For example, I want to network with people who aren't currently in college. I want to be able to network with the people that can be a part of my organization one day. Contact. First, you want to sell them on who you are. We take the people in, on list or in the list, on the list, we contact them. We sell them on who you are. First, we ask them questions, open-ended questions. So where are you from? Why did you decide to come to our school? What are you looking to study? And then you, you share some information about who you are. Oh, you're from New York. I'm also from New York. I have a lot of family in Boca Raton, so I do spend a lot of time down there. And maybe that person might respond and be like, I also have a lot of family in Florida, as many New Yorkers do start to connect on, on a few different levels. Then sell them on the market. The market in our case is fraternity life. Sell them on the market of Greek life. What do we want them to know? Why should they be a part of fraternity life in general? And then sell them on your organization. We've already sold you on fraternity. You know that fraternity is valuable. Why should you just not only join our fraternity, but join our organization? 
once you've got got them there, you should be able to close. Invite them to join your organization. Be able to talk to them about what you you've already talked to them about your organization, why it's beneficial, how it's benefited you. Now invite them to join your organization, and they should feel comfortable saying yes because they haven't only gotten to know you, but they've gotten to know a lot of other people within your organization. Contact is not just a one day thing. It's something that takes place over a longer period of time. I can contact you, tell you all about these things, but I don't wanna close until I feel comfortable knowing that you will accept my offer. Now we're gonna translate networking into recruitment. We're gonna take that original list of 11, and I'm gonna show you exactly how it translates into fraternity recruitment. So we'll start with meeting people through other people. This means meeting your brother's friends, meeting alumni's friends, family members, uh, next door neighbors, meeting the our family members' uh, friends whose sons are going to be going to our school next year. Meet friends of friends. My girlfriend has a, a brother who's gonna be going to my school next year. Our closest sorority has a variety of friends that are gonna be going to our school next year or have friends that didn't join our fraternity this year and are interested in it. Don't forget about the fact that many schools, if not all schools, didn't get to finish their spring semester or spring quarter this year. There are plenty of people who, who wanted to join our fraternity but didn't get a chance to. So we wanna meet those people. How do we meet those people? Leverage social media. Learn through social media. We want to be able to take, take what's on social media and use it to our advantage. Who's following us on our, on our social media pages? Why are they following us? Are they liking our stuff? Have we contacted them? Have we asked them why they're, they're following us? Are you interested in joining my organization? Don't ask the person to join right away. Become friends first. Again, going back to you, the, the, the three key points of sales, become friends with the person first. Sell them on who you are. Use a common interest or contact as a conversation starter. Help the person feel comfortable with you through commonalities. We wanna make sure that, um, that whatever we're talking about, the person feels comfortable talking about. Talking about personal things isn't always the, the best thing to, to start out with. Your home, where you're from, what you did growing up, those types of things are good to talk about. That's not too personal. But when we talk about personal, personal things that people feel comfortable talking about, what are their hobbies? What are their interests? Why, why do they enjoy living in the area that they live in? Who are their closest friends? What do they enjoy doing outside of school? Be cautious of time. Be transparent about time. I, like I said earlier, I'm trying to keep it to 35 to 40, 35 minutes but I feel like we might go to about 40, 45. If anybody has to jump off and uh, throughout this, happy to share the recorded version with you later. Use the 85-15 rule, let the person speak. Ask open-ended questions and listen. We're not here to lecture, we're here to learn. Ask a good question that will give you a good answer. Talk about your experience. Grab his attention with a relevant story. He's already talked about being very athletic in high school. Talk about how you and a lot of your friends play a lot of sports, intramural sports together. Talk about the fraternity you're, you're a part of being very involved in intramurals and that you regularly win different leagues within the intramural leagues. You can even talk about majors. Talk about how you and a, a group of your friends study every single week for the classes that you take um, and help each other out with the classes that you struggle with. Ask about their network. Who else do you know that's going to CCNY? How do you know those people? Why, why, why did the group of you decide to go to CCNY? For those of you who don't know, CCNY College New York, a very important school for, for most of us. Always be prepared with a reason to follow up. Invite him to an upcoming event or an opportunity to meet more people. You've learned where 
this person's from. We've learned what they want to study. We've learned a variety of other things. Let's be sure that we are able to connect him with other people that are like him, that are looking to study the same thing. Be kind. Be caring. Be polite and attentive. We want attentive. We want to make sure that the people that we're talking to don't feel that this is a waste of their time. We want to make sure that the people we're talking to, or the person we're talking to, feels that the conversation we're having is not, not a forced conversation. Then again, have an online presence. Follow up with, with, so, with a social media follow. Check in with the person. We just had this really great conversation. It's, it, it would be a waste of time to leave the conversation and never talk to them again. So translating networking to recruitment again. Networking provides an opportunity to meet new people. Recruitment provides an opportunity for those people to meet your friends. Networking is a way to learn more about a person, while recruitment is a way to teach that person about how they can enhance their college experience. Networking can be done virtually. Recruitment is virtually enhanced. What I mean by this is even when we're on campus and recruiting on campus, we still use virtu everything virtual to recruit and be more successful at recruiting. We spend time on social media. We spend time marketing through social media. So, virtually, so recruitment is virtually enhanced. Networking is an, is an introduction to a person. Recruitment is an introduction to that person's friends. Networking enhances your social, social network. Recruitment gives, him a, gives that person a social network. Networking through virtual conversations. We'll go over three, three areas. One, learn about a person before you speak to them. Learn who, they, learn who they know in your chapter, understand their interests, and establish how you can connect with them. Our ability to conversate with people relies on us to be strategic and knowledgeable about the person we're talking to. While yes, we do a lot of cold calls, we go out, even when we table and just talk to a random person, that oftentimes takes, takes a lot more time for us to be able to connect with those people. Because we have to spend time convincing them to talk to us, one, but two, be able to establish the connection. So what we wanna do is we wanna connect with people that we already, that, that we know or, or that we know through somebody else, get to know them before we get to, before we get to talk to them and then connect with them on, the, on a personal level. Reach out to the person through, through a connection. Your friend Richard Gahile mentioned you're going to CCNY next year. Richard mentioned you're interested in studying philosophy. I happen to be a philo philosophy major. I'd love to talk to you more about what philosophy looks like at CCNY. I also have a few friends that are also philosophy, philosophy majors. I'd love to introduce you to them. Connect him with another friend. As I said, I have another friend who's who is a first year looking to study philosophy. Would you like to me to connect you with him? He's also potentially living in your residence hall. Let's use these three topics and three, these three areas to be able to, to lead a strong conversation with a potential new member. Let's make sure that when we're having a conversation, we're being very intentional about it. The person doesn't necessarily know that you know a little bit more about him than he knows about you. So you don't wanna share that necessarily but you want to use that to your advantage. If you know that the person that referred him, Richard, um, was very involved in uh, baseball growing up and he met you through baseball, ask the question, so I hear you liked baseball. What, what position did you play? Why were you so into baseball? Why did you, did you decide to stop? Actually, are you playing for CCNY this year? So this is something that a lot of people ask or really mention. Networking can be very uncomfortable. However, um, what I do want to talk about is why it, why it is uncomfortable and why it's not, or how it can, can, be seen, can be seen as more comfortable. Meeting new people in general can be very uncomfortable. People every day. You meet the cashier, 
at the, the grocery store, you meet people on social media. Uh, most of us, or I'm not anymore, but most of us are on, on dating apps. Uh, we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. We get followers every day. We meet new people and that's not uncomfortable. What's uncomfortable is meeting people face to face without understanding what this relationship's gonna look like. So meeting people you may know is more comfortable. We need to be able to connect with people that we know. The people that we know will allow us to, be, to feel more comfortable when it comes to our conversation. I'm able to have a conversation with you about something that I know about you. And you're able to respond and be able to also talk about things that, that we, we have in common. If we grew up together, but we haven't talked in a couple of years because you were a freshman in high school when I was a senior, likelihood is that I have no idea what's been going on in your life in the past couple of years. It's okay to ask the question, what have you been up to? We were friends at one point. Whenever you catch up with old friends, you ask the question, what have you been up to? It's not uncomfortable to talk to people that you haven't talked to in a while. As my friend Anthony in the previous session had said, um, DMing isn't weird, you make it weird. Networking isn't, isn't uncomfortable, you make it uncomfortable. If you want to be uncomfortable, you'll be uncomfortable. If you don't want to be uncomfortable, I, I'm confident you'll feel comfortable. Have something interesting to discuss makes things easy. When you, when you have a conversation with somebody, make sure that whatever you're talking about is interesting. Make sure it's something that they want to talk about. When you ask the questions, the basic name tag questions, where are you from, what are you studying, why did you decide to come to school, listen to what they're saying, make sure you're taking in some of the information that they're saying and use that towards the conversation later on. If they talk about that they got a scholarship to play baseball at our school, that's something that they want to talk about. People love to talk about themselves. Let them do that. Net networking can also be very casual. It doesn't have to be the suit and tie type of thing. It can simply be you send a message to someone on Instagram saying, I really like what you're, what you're talking about. I'd love to learn more. Or it could also be you send someone a message on Instagram, say, hey, I don't have your contact information, but my friend said I really need to talk to you about, um, about going to University of Central Florida next year. Um, he said that you're, you're really excited to, to go and that we, we could, I could be really helpful in terms of you being able to choose what classes to take. Um, so someone really introduced us without actually being the person that connected us. Networking should, be, should benefit both parties. We talked about it earlier. Uh, when it comes to fraternity recruitment, we wanna make sure that what I'm giving you, what, whatever you're giving me, I'm giving you back. So I've reached out to you. You're now a potential new member on my list. I've benefited. We want to benefit them. So what can I do to help you when it comes to fraternity recruitment? Or what, what, can, what can I do to help you when it comes to starting at our school? I'd love to help you uh, look at, at your future class schedule. Um, I also have a, a variety of freshmen that I'm friends with that went to my high school that are also going to be studying something similar or going to be living in a residence hall. I'd love to connect you with them. Think back to when you were a first year on campus. One of, the, one of the most difficult things to do was to walk into your residence hall and meet people. That is uncomfortable. But if you can meet people before you get to campus, you might feel a little more comfortable once you get there. People are happy to hide behind a screen. It's easy. I'm per currently not looking at anybody's faces because to be honest, it makes me feel like it's easier for me to have this conversation. to look at words rather than people's faces. When it comes to me having a conversation in person, I'm happy to have that one-on-one -on -one conversation because I, I, I'm, I feel the presence of a person there. I'm able to have a conversation and hear them, hear them giggle, hear them, them, them nod uh, or, or give words of affirmation or confirmation. Do stuff like this, I can't really do that. So what we want to do is we want to make sure, again, that uh, both parties are benefiting. And similar to recruitment, people want to know about you and your organization. If someone, if the person you're talking to is interested in joining a fraternity, he wants to hear about fraternity. And he's very interested in talking to you because you are a fraternity man. 
similar to uh, recruiting for a company. People at Amazon know that people that walk up to them want to talk to them. Also, whenever someone from Amazon calls, calls someone uh, random and says, hey, I'd love to talk to you about a potential job at Amazon, those, that person will likely at least sit on the phone for a little bit and listen to what they have to say. Amazon is a big name. We want to be a big name on our campus. So what we have to make sure we're doing is we're marketing effectively. Uh, we will be able to, up to upload uh, shortly on our YouTube page, if it hasn't already been, been done already, a webinar about um, social media marketing. Love for you to check that out so you can make a bigger impact on your campus in regards to uh, being a big name through social media on campus. So let's talk about a few communication platforms that, um, that you can use. Text messaging has a high open rate and not as high of a as a response rate, but still a high open rate. Social media such as Instagram, Facebook, and Snapchat oftentimes aren't sources that you necessarily need to communicate on, but you passively communicate by posting posting pictures, liking people's photos, getting people to like your social media back. If it's your organization's social media, getting them to like that, then maybe sending them a message once they've liked some of your posts to say, oh, I see you've been liking some of our stuff. Um, I'd love to chat with you about what we've got going on in CBT. Email has a low open rate, and oftentimes when you get an email, you think a lot of people got this. I know earlier today you got an email from me, but look at that, you're, you're still here. And a lot of times people won't respond to you to the email, but they might still act. So while yes, our response rate might be low, um, getting you to attend this workshop also allows me to get you to be able to share this with somebody who wasn't able to make it. And same thing with recruiting. If we connect with one person, that one person might know two people. And those two people might know one person each. And that, that just continues to grow kind of like a domino effect. Zoom is used for large gatherings. Um, I recommend Zoom for info sessions. I highly recommend we use info sessions and we'll talk about, we'll do a webinar about info sessions in the next couple of weeks. But it's something that will allow people coming into our school next year to be able to learn more about our organization on a larger level. And then for us to be able to allow, to be able to share with other people uh, what, what other people, who, who the other people are that we're talking to and other people that they can connect with. Groomy, WhatsApp are all group messaging that people can um, can put, put people into groups. Um, WhatsApp is an international messaging uh, platform that is oftentimes used for international. So if you're a, a part of a chapter that has a lot of international students, highly recommend you use that if you don't already. But being able to, to connect people through group chats is also a highly effective way to continue to, to engage people. We wanna make sure that from the, from the time that we start talking to them to the time they join, they're able to regularly connect and communicate with us so that they, we can show that we're still interested in who they are. Lastly, um, Discord. Discord is something I actually learned about recently. A lot of people use Discord for gaming. It's a good way for people to, um, to show your screen, uh, play some video games, and then be able to communicate back and forth. A lot of people use it for just communication in general, but definitely a good pla resource platform to use if, if you have the ability to do so. So best practices in networking for recruitment. Establish a names list. Ask all undergraduate brothers who they know Ask alum, all alumni who they know. Ask family members who they know. Those are people we want to con connect with. Those are people that we're able to connect with people that we know through people that they know. Establish a recruitment committee. These are people that, who can connect with people that are referred to us, people who, who represent ZBT well, and people who can connect with potential new brothers on a personal level. So people that feel comfortable talking to random people, but are able to have a good, good quality conversation with people that um, they, might, they might know through someone else or might not know at all. 
contact plan, who to contact, how to contact, when to contact, and how often to contact. We want to make sure that we're constantly staying in contact with people, but not too much to the point where people feel that we're overwhelming them. Over the next three months, it's kind of hard to maintain contact with somebody and, ho and, and understand and expect that they're still interested, but we have to ensure that we're creating a good plan to ensure that we uh, don't lose out anybody in the future. Then long-term communication. Communicate regularly. Engage, recruit, engage recruits passively, more often and actively strategically. Passively could look like Instagram. Tag someone on Instagram. Uh, like some of their posts. Uh, send them a text message to check, just to check and see how they do. Actively could be, we want to introduce you to a couple people. We've got a video game tournament coming up soon. Love to, to include you on that. Involve recruits in recruiting others. We want to make sure that the people that we like, that the people that we want to join our organization, uh, we're able to get them to, to, to um, include their friends as well. Include, uh, ensure recruits get to know a wide range of brothers. We've got four, three to four months of recruiting ahead of us. We've got plenty of time to introduce potential new brothers to people in our organization. Lastly, I want to end with uh, a quote that I've always lived off of. It's not what you know, it's who you know. It's not what you know, it's who you know. I want to keep in mind that we might know a lot, or we might know a little about a lot, or a lot about a little, but the people we know are the people that are going to be able to help us be successful. So when I think about networking, think about who it is you know that can help you be successful, or who it is you know that can help us to recruit the highest quality individuals.